1891, this French Jewish physicist invented something that is now useless. Nonetheless, he won the 1908 Nobel Prize in Physics for his method of reproducing colors photographically based on the phenomenon of interference. You heard that right, he invented a method of doing color photography. The trouble is, it's next to useless. But the physics is cool, so let me tell you about it. So it starts with a glass plate, as is typical for 19th century photography. And on that plate, one paints an ultra fine grain light sensitive film on it. Basically, a thin layer of gelatin with silver halide particles suspended in it left to dry. Now what makes the silver chemistry work is that when light hits the silver halide particles, they undergo a chemical reaction that produces tiny bits of metallic silver. And the same happens in Gabriel Lippmann's photography. It just uses the physics of interference to produce colors in much the same way soap bubbles do. So you take the glass plate with film on it and place it face down in a thin layer of liquid mercury, so the top of the glass is still exposed to the air, but the bottom is in contact with the mercury. Now, if light comes in from the top, it will pass through the glass, then the film, then reflect off the mercury, then pass back through the film and out through the glass. So in the thin film layer, you have light waves coming in and light waves coming out, a recipe for interference. Now for those who don't know, interference is what happens when light waves, or any waves, overlap. If the peaks align with the peaks, you get amplification of the light wave, and if the peaks align with the troughs, you get cancellation. In this case, the interference forms a standing wave. So there are places where the wave is always cancelled, called nodes, and there are places where the wave is oscillating strongly, called antinodes. And critically, the distance between those strongly oscillating parts of the standing wave depends on the wavelength, or color, of the light wave that's present there. So in the film, we can think of the light only being present at the antinodes and not being present at the nodes, and that means that only the silver halide particles of the antinodes become activated. So when we go to process the film and wash away all of the unactivated silver halide, we're only left with a bit of metallic silver where the antinodes were, forming tiny, mostly transparent, mirrors. And now, if you shine white light on the developed plate at the correct angle, some of that light will reflect off the tiny silver mirrors left in place where the antinodes used to be. But those antinodes were spaced exactly half a wavelength apart from one another. And so waves of that wavelength will travel one full additional cycle upon reflection for each mirror it passes through, allowing those waves to add up perfectly. But if you shine another color at that spot, the reflections won't line up and amplify like the correct wavelengths do. The net result is that depending on what color light was shining on a particular part of the film during exposure, it's exactly that color of light that is reflected most strongly. The end result is a color photography with no pigments at all.